Scavengers still rush the dust carts on the edge of Abidjan, despite everything that happened. One year ago, a wave of mystery illnesses broke out near the tip and in many other places around the city. The locals whispered that the sickness was caused by chemical waste offloaded by a ship called the Probo Kuala, which had recently arrived from Holland. This is where the story begins. The ship arrived here at the Africa dock in Amsterdam. It unloaded tons of sludge into a barge, which headed off to the petroleum dock. Up until now, this appeared to be a thoroughly routine clean-up job. And this is where the problem started. After the waste was pumped out of the barge into these tanks, it gave off a terrible smell. The emergency services were called, and the Dutch authorities halted the operation immediately. Trafigura, a giant oil trading company, had chartered the oil tanker, the Probo Kuala. Initially, the Dutch had quoted a price of under $10,000 to dispose of what they thought was harmless slops. Now they'd had a look at it, that price shot up to over $700,000. Trafigura decided to look for a cheaper option. Thousands of miles away in Ivory Coast, a poor country still recovering from a civil war, they found their solution. A year ago, the tanker pulled into here, Abidjan's port. Then, on the night of August the 19th, the waste was transferred into lorries, which headed off into the town. Trafigura contracted an Abidjan company called Tommy to dispose of the foul-smelling sludge. Tommy charged $20,000. And under cover of darkness, their trucks fly-tipped 500 tonnes of chemical slops. They use sites all around Abidjan, including here at the town's main rubbish tip, Aquedo. Shortly afterwards, tens of thousands of people fell ill and 16 died. Just days later, I came here to cover the story. Within five minutes, my eyes were stinging and my throat was hurting so much I just had to leave. But the people living round about just did not have that choice. <laughs> Traffic Eurus say they had no reason to think that Tommy would improperly dispose of the material. But it is now clear that Tommy, a newly licensed company, broke all the rules. And the people, like the mayor of a plateau... Of Guy Ulo is a science teacher who lives near one of the sites where Tommy tipped the sludge. He was woken by the smell of rotten eggs. Uh, it smells like a spoiled eggs, and a mixture of spoiled eggs, but it's like also rubber burning. You know, that strong smell when you burn a rubber, you know, that is like... A, he stinks in the nose, it's just like unbearable. Shortly afterwards, Guy started to feel very ill. I started to cough and stuff like that. And then after that, you know, it's like uh, my nose started to bleed. So for like uh, at least three months, three and a half months, almost four months, I was very sick. I had to go to a hospital every week. Okay, it was, it was just terrible. It was just uh, very terrible. While I was talking to Guy, another man approached us. He too said the waste had affected his health. You, you were ill for a bit? Yeah. You were ill for two months? Yeah. Almost everywhere uh, that I've been here, people have come up to me spontaneously, wanting to tell their story, wanting to show how ill they are. This guy has uh, very bad things on his, on his legs. But in this case, as in many others, it's very difficult to tell whether it was the waste that caused his problems. Trafigura do not accept responsibility, but in February they agreed to pay $200 million to the Ivorian government. Most of the money went to pay for the clean-up and to improve health facilities. The rest went to the victims. The families of those who died received $200,000 and those who were hospitalised got $4,000. The rest received $400 each. Guy says it wasn't enough. They gave uh, $400 to everybody. No matter how heal you got or whatever it is, even not counting like us who spend more than $500 uh, uh, to, to treat ourselves, to go to the hospital. Martin Day is a British lawyer who's suing Trafigura on behalf of more than 7,000 Ivorians like Guy. Bonjour. Bonjour. These are, uh, these are all our clients. Bonjour, Monsieur Day. Bonjour. He's launched a £100 million group action in the British courts. He's back in Ivory Coast to conduct further interviews. 
I had a throat x-ray because I felt a strong burning pain in my chest whenever I breathed. The evenings, in particular, we all had skin problems, chest pains, red eyes and skin irritation. Trafigura point out the whole city is heavily polluted and there are many possible sources of contamination other than their waste. But Martin Day believes there's a link between illness and proximity to dump sites. To build his case, the lawyer checks the exact GPS coordinates of his clients' homes. 270 metres from the equator, one dump site. Yakuba Jarasuba is the local MP. He lives near one of the sites where Tommy dumped the waste. I suffered a lot, like everyone. I think you need to talk about everyone who lives in this neighborhood, everywhere where it was dumped in the town, in fact. You can't describe it. You have to experience it. What happened made me call those who brought us this waste serious criminals. I asked Martin Day why he was suing Trafigura rather than Tommy. I am very clear that Trafigura was responsible. They were the ones who took the decision to refine in this way. They were the ones who took the decision to take back the waste from Amsterdam where it could have been properly ref uh, treated in a way that would have made, meant no damage to anybody uh, and decided to bring it here to Abidjan. Traffic Euro vigorously dispute Martin Day's allegations and are also suing him for libel. How can you be sure that the people coming forward to you, the claimants, were really sick? We have the great advantage in this case is that uh, many, many, many people went to see government doctors, uh, clinics, hospitals uh, well before money was ever being talked about. It's true that it's you know, from our experience in other African countries that clearly the allure of money is a, a difficult one in terms of people being so flat broke that they will uh, perhaps bend the rules in their own way to, to, to try and get that money. So the, the fact that we have the benefit of uh, records from many, many hospitals is a great comfort in terms of being able to be satisfied that these are genuine cases. As the sick began to recover, the clean-up of the dump sites began. But the Ivorians say some waste remains. The presidential spokesman, Gervais Koulibaly, says Trafigura must finish the job. Donc. Let's stick with what was signed. It was signed that Trafigura has to do the complementary and total depollution. Everyone knows all the toxic waste has not been removed. Trafigura is a true multinational with bases all over the world Geneva, London, New York, and here in Amsterdam. Last year, their turnover was $45 billion. That's twice the size of the entire Ivory Coast economy. Trafigura say they cannot be held responsible for any deaths or injuries alleged to have occurred in Abidjan. They dispute that the chemicals posed a risk to human health. They say they hired the disposal company Tommy in good faith and could not have foreseen how Tommy would dispose of the slops. But the problem for Trafigura is this. Before they'd left Amsterdam, the Dutch authorities had already told them that this waste needed special and costly treatment. So why then did they transport it half the way around the world to a desperately poor country? Back in Abidjan, those who are sick are still angry. I tell myself it's a crime, a crime against humanity. Maybe we aren't important. If the waste had exterminated us, maybe it doesn't matter. But we know that God created us to live too, and what happened is dramatic. It's very serious. It's clear that a crime has been committed and that thousands fell ill. But whether Trafigura must take responsibility looks set to be decided in court. <laughs>